Hey golfers, Drew Mahold here with Second Swing Golf, and today we're at Cobra discussing the new Cobra Speed Zone irons. I'm here with Tom Olsofsky. He's going to give us some information uh, on the brand new releases in 2020. Speed Zone irons, Tom, uh, obviously I think the, the big message here is distance. Distance is the name of the game, and Speed Zone delivers that. Yeah, thanks, Drew. You know, it's really about distance. We survey golfers all the time about what do they want, uh, and the first one is always distance. And then they also want everything else, forgiveness and mm -hmm. accuracy and all these other things and feel is really important in irons too. So, but we have to drive the distance uh, first and foremost. That's the one that takes the most technology to figure out. So when you think about what we do in these irons, uh, in the speed of the irons, we package some technologies that we've used over the number of years and added a new one into the, the fold. And that's the carbon fiber top line in the long iron. So when you think about these structures, again, think about it as you're trying to design a tennis racket. You want a strong frame, but you want some flexibility in the middle. So um, we put in a forged face in this design, so it's got a little bit of flexibility, and that flexibility is going to give us more speed, higher launch. But the carbon fiber top line around the frame, if you will, is we want some stiffness there. And you want stiffness, but you don't want weight high. So when you're able to take that steel out of the top and put in carbon fiber, carbon fiber is a very stiff material, but it's very lightweight. So you can maintain the stiffness, and, and what we call it is essentially it's an I-beam structure in steel, and then it's filled with carbon fiber. So that's really helpful because we can save about three grams. Never say, wow, three grams, what's that worth? Well, when you think about an iron head, if you take three grams from the top and put it to the bottom, it actually has a huge improvement mm -hmm. in lowering the CG. And so these irons are amongst the lowest CG irons we've ever made, uh, and certainly that's something that gets the ball up quickly and goes really far. So we also designed that in combination with the improvements to the forged um, mm -hmm. power shell face. So one of the things we did was we actually took out some tungsten. And people said, why did you take out tungsten? They said, well, we found we could get a lower CG without tungsten and maintain our inertia with our shaping. Interesting, yeah. And one thing I noticed too, just looking at them, there's a, a material here in the cavity that uh, I presume is to kind of dampen vibrations mm -hmm. and improve feel is too. Uh, can you explain a little bit what that is? Yeah, that's a, we call it a medallion system. Okay. So the medallions are multi-piece uh, complex designs. Uh, there's usually some metal pieces in there that are mostly for the visual and looking, um, you know, trying to make that idealistic mm -hmm. look. But it's a TPU, which is a urethane material. There's also some foams and some other materials all sandwiched together so that we get a very soft feel. Now, interesting enough, when you uh, ask golfers what they want in feel, they all want it to feel really solid, mm -hmm. essentially like a, a solid muscle back type forging. That's what they all think they want. Um, so what we do is we try and design that. When you make a very thin structure, they don't feel that mm -hmm. way. And we can go back uh, a couple years and look at some of those designs without these complex medallion systems um, and find out, yeah, they don't sound good. They're loud and they're clacky. Um, when you design the system, you're trying to get it back to that feel, even though you're not doing that in sure. metal. You're using other materials to do that. The other key thing about that is it's also saving weight. You know, you could put metal behind there to, to make it feel really good but then you don't get the speed out of it and you don't get the low CG that sure. we have with this feedback. Absolutely, and then I know obviously the big thing to touch on is one length, uh, the concept that you know, Bryson DeChambeau has been huge in and obviously you guys mm -hmm. kind of came in and have made it really a staple in golf now. Um, so can you give us just kind of an overarching the, uh, the goal of what one length does and what golfers can really get out of playing one length irons? Yeah, the, the thing about one length that's really interesting is, um, you know, golfers are wanting consistency. Not, again, distance, but they also want consistency. Mm -hmm. There's no golfer on the planet that thinks they're consistent, <laughs> even the best players yeah. in the world. So everybody needs more consistency. They want more consistency. We found that a lot of golfers, especially as you get up in the handicap scale, are inconsistent. And we see that from just on the range, you have fitting tape and you see all the impacts around the face. Um, so one of the things we know that with one length is because you're making the same swing and same setup throughout the set, you can get much more consistent and you cer certainly see that right away on long irons, but you also see it on short irons. And you think, geez, well, short irons are actually longer. I shouldn't see it there. But again, it's one swing. Mm -hmm. So that's really the concept that makes uh, a great deal of sense to golfers desire and consistency. And we find a lot of golfers out there want that. So, um, and some of the studies that's been done in the industry outside of our own uh, says that 30 to 50 percent of golfers could benefit from one length, improving consistency and maintaining their distance and ball flights. So. Absolutely, yeah. And then I think the one that I mean, clearly it worked, it's worked for Bryson. Um, and I know you guys have also um, fine-tuned the line angles and some of the specs mm -hmm. too to even mm -hmm. Im further improve that consistency and uh, again improve re results out there for golfers. Yeah, one of the questions Drew we get from a lot of golfers is why did you change the line angles from just seven irons? And we actually learned through our fitters, our fitters out there, we actually made a fitting head that you can adjust in line angle, just like the drivers. Mm -hmm. 
And so we let the fitters all in the market all try this. Oh, we find people on their long irons, we're leaving them a little bit right, right-handed golfer, and short irons going a little bit left. Okay, well, what do we do? We can adjust line. Well, and they would do that in the fitting carts, and all of a sudden people are hitting them straighter. So that happened early on a few years ago. So we came back and actually did some testing that way with those new specs and found out that the dispersion was tighter and, there, and players were more on the target line. So those are the kind of tweaks we're learning. Uh, we're working with Bryson to learn some of these things as he progresses through you know, changes in equipment, changes in his swing, changes in his body. Mm -hmm. um, but we're learning as well as we have these great tools of, uh, we use a gear system here in Carlsbad, we have TrackMans all over the world. We have all this data now that's coming into us to help us make better decisions. And somebody asked me today, well, you know, why did you change it? You know, the concept is everything should be a seven. I said, well, if it doesn't work as good as it could, why would I just leave it as a seven mm -hmm. iron? You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make it better. So what we do as a team is look at every way we can make that better. So the one length clubs that we, uh, we make now with certainly the King F9 Speedback and going into King Speed Zone next year perform better every year. And our surveys we've gotten back from buyers said, ooh, I, I rate mm -hmm. these even higher than my prior ones, uh, and I really like the way they play. That said, we're still providing more distance, and I think both of them, the key is, if you're making it more playable, you still want more distance. So that power shell face, we've changed that a little bit. It's thinner up high, so that saves weight and lowers the CG. It's thinner through the sole, so that adds more flexibility. So everything about the King Speed Zone irons is there to provide more distance, higher launch, better playability, and great feel. So Tom, I know obviously the, the idea for the Speed Zone irons is to really improve distance forgiveness for everybody, um, and that includes tour players. I mean, I know Ricky Fowler played F9 speed back uh, as a four iron in his bag, and I think he's playing the speed zone as well uh, in 2020. Yeah, one of the things, we just talked to Ricky uh, earlier this year, and one of the things he loves about that playability of, of that kind of iron is uh, it's great off the tee, and it's great for when he wants to hit those long shots to actually land and hold a green. You know, when we think about those shots that these tour players need, they make the greens really tough. They tighten up the pins. You know, they have to be pretty accurate, even from a long way away. So. Uh, Ricky has dabbled over the years with um, clubs like five irons and utility irons and long irons. And so they vary typically from the traditional muscle back set that he plays. And he loves the playability. He was hitting it for us in Florida a little bit ago and was talking about how he could shape shots with it, how he can hit everything he wants, how it has a nice high strong trajectory, not high and spinny, but high and strong. So uh, he's experimenting now with the, the speed back forearm as well um, because he had, excuse me, with, with the speed zone forearm because he had great success with the F9. And I think some of the things, you know, they were even talking about it on the, on the media and the telecast saying, you know, in a few shots I saw him hit, it was like 270, 280, you know, with an iron. And they would say, oh, he's pulling out that iron again. He's really good with that. Um, so that's something that we know even the best players in the world want, the right trajectory, the right launch, the right feel. And that's why we say it's a, it's a club that can work for all golfers.